Michael, congratulations on another successful lecture at Devices this year. Um, I was a little surprised. You, you usually just focus in on geometric details and interesting facts that you've discovered and teased out of formations, but this year you went into some personal areas and some of your own experiences and actually called the lecture Astonishments. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about why you decided to go that, down that road? Um, I, I felt really that I'd been skirting this for many years. I'd been avoiding the, I suppose what you call, could call the numinous unknown and bewildering nature of this phenomenon which offers us all the time coincidences, synchronicities, oddities, strangenesses. And so I just thought I would try and pull some of these out and recount them. Um, I, a further astonishment, which I didn't mention, was just how many there are. Um, we learn to encompass everything in the conventional world view and staring at this landscape of normal oddness regular strangeness I was further astonished by how much there is and how consistently it is part of this environment now. So we came in from Devizes, turned the corner to someone on that part of the road, I said to her, it's arrived. And again, this is something I've never done. I've never done before or since. I said, it's there. Now, she, she's a tough little broad, isn't she? <laughs> and she said, what do you mean it's arrived? I said, it's there. And it was dark, and we'd been around long enough to know you don't go looking in the dark into fields. And she said, OK, what's it like? And I said, it's got three circles. And she said, all right. We went back to sleep in Francine Blake's um, annex. And the next morning, when we got up, I phoned Steve. I phoned Steve and I said, Steve, have you been to photograph the formation in Edgewell Hampton? Patricia was furious. She said, you can't get him to do that. We don't know that it's there. And I said, it's there. I knew it was there. Next slide. We went there in the morning. That was there. This pair of formation was another one which became central to my work. And we walked in. And I said, well, there you are. And she said, ah, two circles, two circles. And I thought, oh God, who do you complain to? <laughs> but here, here is, here is the extraordinary part. I did an enormous amount of work on this, which was a gridded formation and which I later showed to be referring to 2012. It was a calendar grid. And we spent a lot of time there. This was our headquarters. We used to come in down that path and down that tram line, that was our headquarters. And we would photograph, we would measure. We spent days there until it was harvested. And we sat there and the combine was shaving the field away like a piece of bacon 
cutting, cutting, cutting. And something, again, miraculous happened because the combine harvester is worth a lot of money and they don't mess about. And something happened which has never happened to me before or since. The combine harvester driver stopped there. He stopped the machine, switched it off, opened the window. And we went over and he said to us these words, which again are engraved on my consciousness. He said, have you seen the third circle? <laughs> this event of me coming around the corner of the monument and saying to her in the dark, the formations arrived. And uh, knowing that there were three elements which upset Patricia because she liked me was very nervous about becoming woo-woo, you know. Oh, I knew it was there, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, it made me very nervous. Yeah. Nothing like this had happened before or since, and I was rather surprised. Um, and then, as I disclosed later, um, there were only two elements which I was disappointed by, but the farm worker told us that there was a third, which... Uh, what is, yeah, well, as Tony Soprano would say, what are you going to do? But the, the subjects of coincidences is, for me, the biggest personal experiences that I've had around the crop circles have been the most astounding coincidences which defy all explanation and are simply dismissed by most people as merely coincidences. But they point towards something, all these coincidences. But you see, here is the thing. This kind of coincidence synchronistic has been part of the structure of human life around the world through the ages and scientism the most pervasive religious fundamentalism we've ever known has shifted our society into eliminating this we don't worship anymore. We're not in awe of nature and the world anymore. Everything can be explained. And not only explained, it has to be explained in its complete singularity. You have to get rid of all external factors, even us looking at it, to try and determine whether or not this is a factor. But anything that happens in simultaneity, anything that happens connected together with this, 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 and this, and this. It's just nothing. It's just regardless. If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Uh, and so I do not believe that there is a shift and that synchronicities and coincidences and strangenesses are surging back. I believe simply that the curtain imposed on us by the scientific, scientific world view is slowly being opened up to allow us to return to what I believe is a pre-existing 
natural state of humanity within which not only do coincidences and oddities and inexplicabilities occur, but we accept that they're, they're part, part of the substance of daily life.